Addicted to the Outdoors begins now. Well, we have finished our first season of Addicted to the Outdoors, and uh, it has been an interesting ride. Uh, first and foremost, we want to thank our fans, because if you guys didn't watch, we would not get to do this for a living, and uh, we really appreciate it. You know, it's been an interesting year, a lot of highs and a lot of lows, and uh, all in all, just a blast. And we've been trying to figure out how to close our season, and we all came up with the idea that I love, and that is, let's give our fans the best of season number one. Limb Saver presents Addicted to the Outdoors with John and Gina Brunson. Savers addicted to the outdoors. Best of season one. After you guys wrapped up the season and looking back on all the shows, what was uh, the show that meant the most to you after it's all said and done? Hmm. I'd say probably RV South trip. South Dakota. Yeah. Absolutely. Definitely the our first show, the RV trip with all the kids. Um, it's really the first time that we got to tie the show into a family vacation slash holiday. Uh, we've never been away from the kids on a holiday and we really needed to go hunt at this time of the year in South Dakota. So we're like, man, let's just drag all the kids with us and with us. Yeah. Yeah, just make it a big family vacation. So we rented a big RV. We threw all six kids in there, plus me and Gina, plus two camera guys, and we headed from Tampa, Florida to South Dakota on the big Brunson road trip vacation. It's one thing to have six kids in a house all day, but it's a totally different thing when you have six kids confined to an RV for two days straight. <laughs> now the game plan at C&D was simple. He has got some incredible whitetails and he's got some great muleys. Go right up on top of this hill. Sneak through that grass, kinda. It was Thanksgiving Day, and I had just shot my first muley ever. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, he does kind of go out more on this side, and this side kind of goes out. Yeah. Cover was pretty scarce, so it was time for us to start belly crawling. We finally ran out of cover, so it was time to make a decision and see if we could make something happen. Well, I'll tell you, after running out of cover, I was still sitting a pretty good ways from this deer. That's a nice buck. 
<laughs> we got it done. Good old neck on him. The water clarity was incredible. It was like pool water. I mean, you could see 20 feet straight down. Catfish, yeah. What's that? Catfish. Catfish. Can I shoot him? Yeah, shoot him. Yeah. <laughs> she just wants to whack something. You can shoot everything but redfish, trout, tarpon, and sharks. It sounds easy enough and it looks easy enough, but it takes a little bit of getting used to. I saw him go left, but I don't see him anymore. It's right there. Oh, here. Big ray, big ray, big ray. Big stingray, big stingray. Oh, you got him! Woo! Oh no! Oh no! Ah! Don't let it go on your boat. It yanked me and I like flew like four feet over the boat. I got it. I mean, I screamed. <laughs> I did. I'm like, I screamed like a little girl. I didn't mean to scream, but I was going over. <laughs> That's a big stingray. Gina smoked him. Perfect shot. Oh, you perfect had to go shoot shot. the monster, didn't you? Yeah, and she hit him just absolutely perfect. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Addicted to the Outdoors. Best of season one. You know, I was watching watching the CIO show, and it seems like you guys uh, were having a kind of a little hunt party. Do you guys run into a lot of friends <laughs> on the road? Yeah, um, and CIO is a perfect example. Uh, this year we got to hunt with some friends from the industry, which is rare. Uh, mostly we just see each other at shows. But the other cool thing is guys like Donnie, you know, we met him on the road at CIO, I don't know, probably three, three, four years ago. Yeah. And, um, you know, just became good friends with him, and we ended up hunting with him every year there. And it was cool this year because even though it was a tough hunt for us, the old Donnie, you know, he puts down one of his biggest bucks ever with a bow. Big old wide deer was headed his way. Yeah, but unfortunately, he never made it into bow range. Man, what a buck. I guess this big old buck read the script because he was headed right down the trail. Good shot, you got him. You got him. Good shot, Donnie. Well, that'd be my second 13 pointer at the Grigsby. Yeah. One awesome deer. Whoa, 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 whoa. John, I'm on my side of the road. Honey. You are psycho. Hey, man, that <laughs> night was her fault. She was oh, driving was and she about killed us doing, you know, Mach 10 around the in her well, that's because it was pitch about black and I had three guys yelling in my ear with a big light in my face. So that means press the gas harder and you know, let's end up in the cornfield. Um, now, you know, with us, we're, you know, we've been together 18 years, uh, so we're definitely the typical married couple with kids. I mean, you know, we're gonna pick at each other and poke at each other and you know, it's just the way it is. Uh, the thing about us is what you see on TV is what you get. I mean, that's, you know, that's how we are and that's the real deal. Yeah, that's reality. <laughs> Well, after our evening hunt, we decided to shoot over to the Grigsby to have dinner with everybody, but uh, nothing's that simple. We unintentionally decided to take the scenic route. We are getting lost. I knew I should have drove. I'm telling you, babe. Well, because we've been on this road for a while, and yes. he said it's only five or six miles. That was Rupal? 
No, you said Rogi. Ruple Zed. Ruple Zed. Ruple Zed. Zed. I told you I saw it. I told you. What? Right here. Slow down. Slow. Right here. Right here. Right here. No, it's not. Ruple. Ruple. Oh. Why is it on that side? Oh, I told you that. I said that on the way down here the first time. And you're like, no, because uh, it's on the right. I'm like, no, no, no. I'm thinking there was a road on the no, left. You but you were Rogi. so sure. But that's because you said the road was called Rogi. Nay, nay. Nay, nay. Nay, nay. I will go back and check the tape. And if that's, that's the case, fine. I will erase it. I don't know how it was my fault because they were telling me where to go. Okay, you need to slow down. John, I'm only going 30 miles an hour. Yeah, but there's a bunch of turns like that, Gina. Just to be safe. Here's no more roads. He said it was on that road. Oh, oh we're going to crash and be in a cornfield. Gina? What? I'm going 25. <laughs> uh, Gina is fixed to get found <laughs> in the cornfield. What's the name of the road that the lodge is on? Don't even say we're on the wrong road. Rogi. We're, okay, we're on Rogi. We're, nah, we're on Rupal. Wait a minute. I told you that, John. Stop. I know. We, we, we're still good. We're still good. No, we're not. We're on Rupal. Like, way... Danny's the man, all right. Man, this has been a big ordeal. We've been everywhere, <laughs> except to the right place. Oh man, this is like the 18th call. No service. Oh my God, somebody shoot me. <laughs> 45 yards, I could but I had no, I mean, no challenge whatever, but I, I swear it's 160 and eight. Well, it's always fun hanging out at camp, but this year was a little more fun than normal because we got to catch up with some of our friends from the industry and we just don't get to hunt together that often. Not bow hunting. No, no, I hate it too. <laughs> well, how often do I get to talk girl talk in camp? Not often, but man, it was so great to have Lee and Tiffany in camp. When they take their hair out, I mean, you, your hair's gonna be broke. So it's like, kind of. I just like suck it up and That's, like, that's why I did it. Welcome back to the best of Addicted to the Outdoors, season one. No, all right, ready? <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> I noticed how the Deer Meadows hunt in Nebraska on that show, you really pulled it off at the last minute. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah that was uh, that, that was a tough hunt. Um, mainly because Gene and I, we opted to hunt together instead of splitting up, which was a mistake. Mm -hmm. uh, then I got poison ivy, which cost us a day. Gone. Yeah, I mean, so uh, yeah, it was all my fault. So, um, you know, it was tough and I ended up passing on a bigger buck the first morning than, than I ended up killing. But, you know, that's hunting. Um, sometimes you pass and you get a bigger buck, sometimes you get nothing, and sometimes you pull it off at the last minute, which is what I did. <laughs> About 4.30 rolled around and we were thinking, man, this can't be good. We spotted him, we moved on him and set up, and uh, finally, with just a little bit of light left, he was heading down the mountain. He was coming down the mountain, and uh, the camera was on him, and I couldn't see him. I could see him, and the camera couldn't see him. We just didn't know if we were going to pull it together. Is he the one to the left? I don't see him. Are you on him? We finally pulled it together, and uh, I squeezed the trigger. day, last couple of minutes of light, you gotta love pulling it off. Oh, freaking sweet, sweet, sweet. Johnny saved Ooh, the day. Easy now. I don't know, but he's a nice buck. He's heavy, he's nice first muley. Smoked in. We put the big, we put the big team effort on him. Yeah. Hey Gina, I saw that you were uh, filming yourself there. <laughs> Oh yeah. gosh, yeah. And, um, that was pretty funny. Yeah, um, I've never done that before, and as you can see, the footage wasn't the best. And because I did get the camera set up, no, I got the camera set up <laughs> on the deer, but in the meantime, I tried to scoot over and get my gun up, and just too much movement, and I got busted.
So me and my guide Kevin are gonna go and try to do our own thing, stocking up on our own buck. So Kevin's not a professional cameraman, but he's gonna do his best. And as long as we get the buck down, that's all that matters. Right? Right. So far we've had a little bit of action, not a whole lot. We've seen a couple does and a buck. We're not really sure how big he was. Hopefully something will come down behind us to feed. Okay. Let me give you an update. Our update is we got busted. They must have just seen my movement. Stood up, I didn't even know they stood up and they were gone. So, wait it out and hopefully we'll get a shot at one. Gina, tell okay. us about your Texas buck. Well, he was a monster <laughs> and I was so excited when I seen him come out because I knew I was gonna shoot him. Well, we had ran out of camera light, so we started breaking our stuff down. Yeah, I think it's a dove from earlier. Oh, yeah. We had already called it a night, but this doe popped out of nowhere, and guess what was right behind her? There is a monster buck right there in front of us. This was an incredible deer for the hill country, so she pulled the trigger. He's down. Yeah, let's go look at my deer. And there is a monster buck right there in front of us. That is a nice buck. Look at this. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Hey, tell us about the uh, Florida Gator trip you took Lee and Tiffany on. Oh, that was so fun. Go ahead, you tell them, babe. Uh, for me, the highlight was Tiffany getting yanked off the front of the boat. I mean, that was the funniest thing <laughs> I'd ever seen. Her eyes were like... Oh, my gosh. Ready? Yeah, you're right. Go ahead. You're okay. They won't bother you. They won't bother you. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> 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 I'm laughing too much. <laughs> oh, your mic, too. I was like, I'm going to Oh, man. That was awesome. Oh, my God. They pull hard, you let them go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I did. I tripped. <laughs> when we got back in the boat, you know, she was fine, so it was all good. But we, I got back to the hotel room about 5 that morning, took a quick shower, laid down in bed. It was dead silent. And I just started cracking up. And Gina's like, what are you laughing at? I'm like, all I can see is her flying off that boat and her eye, her face when she came out of that water. She was such a good sport, though. Uh, yeah, yeah, she, she did She did real she good. Did really she good. didn't freak out too bad, so we were proud of her. You're watching the best of Addicted to the Outdoors season one. Hey John, tell us about the Canada moose trip where Gina shot her first moose. Uh, that was a really cool trip, very interesting uh, wilderness hunt and um, a lot of fun. And uh, yes, Gina got to shoot her first moose. Yay. It was a great trip and it was more fun for me to see her shoot her first moose than it would have been for me to actually shoot my first moose. Our first sighting was a cow and a calf. We 
we hunted all day long and right at last light we looked up and spotted something on the riverbank. Moose, moose. It's a bull. Yeah. Alright, there's a bull broadside. I was gonna have to stand up in a canoe floating down the river shooting a muzzle loader. This was gonna be a tough shot. 150 yards with a muzzle loader out of a boat. Okay, just wait. Hey, wait, just let us stretch just a little bit. Gina drops this moose with an incredible shot. I was so excited, I just shot my first moose. And we cannot wait to get to shore for Gina to put her hands on her first moose ever. Oh my God, let me get it on. Sir, second day, and I killed a moose standing up in the boat. Free hand, The smile on her face, the look on her face was priceless. It was just so exciting to actually watch it happen. Um, uh, you know, it, it was a great season, uh, a lot of fun, we learned a lot. Um, you know, the fans, again, we want to thank you guys for watching. Uh, it's If you guys didn't watch our show, we wouldn't get to do this for a living. So we're, we're very thankful that we get to chase our dream and do what we love for a living, because you know, a lot of people can't say that. Um, We've learned a lot this year, especially working with Finch. Um, you know, he sends us what I call hate mail, um, <laughs> tweaking us and telling us what we're doing right and wrong in the field. So we've definitely made a lot of adjustments on how we're filming and we've made a lot of adjustments on our trips. I'll tell you this, uh, we are definitely gonna bump it up to a different level next year. Corey, stop. How you doing? Hey, day three. We're headed to the tree stand with Bender Outdoors. <laughs> Six hours and Corey already broke the table. I didn't break nothing and now I'm fixing it. <laughs>